Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Abalandeli Belanga. It's your host here, Umlandeli Belanga. Umlandeli Belanga that has vowed to teach you how to be accurate followers of the sun, or complete or holy followers of the sun. Uh, followers of the sun that will follow the lamb wherever it, uh, it goes. So, uh, Happy New Year again. We have officially crossed over into uh, the promised land, spring. Spring, uh, the land flowing uh, with milk and honey. The land of the lambs, the land or the time when uh, lambs are born. The, t the, the, the time when, um, when uh, sp spring gushes with, uh, with life and newness. It's uh, the time of beginnings. Uh, we call it Aries. It's called Aries. Um, just to go into the word a bit and then uh, contextualize it as to where I'm going. The word Aries comes from uh, a, a root in Latin, roughly translated to, uh, to ram, but the root actually means to spring up or to start or to begin. And so now uh, the group of uh, stars that, that appear in the morning at sunrise after the spring equinox, they are given that name or were given the name by the ancients, Aries. When we see that star cluster that we will associate with lambs and rams being born we will put it at at the beginnings at uh the beginning and so we have uh, this saying which says uh the, the lamb of god the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world sin of course from a mystical understanding being unbalanced or unevenness uh, from the context that uh to be whole and to be holy is actually one and the same thing. That is the same word. If you are whole, you are holy. And so to be in sin is to be out of balance. So in, in, in the case now of Father Lamb that taketh away the sin or the unbalance of the world, the unbalance being after spring equinox in September 21, we enter Mandulo. We enter the spring. The nights start from that 21st of uh, October let me let me start there we experience a what two days two and a half days when it's equal day and equal night so when those when those stars appear in the morning of which we to use the same star cluster is used in the north remember we following we are reading mythologies of the north and so to use that star cluster or to, use, to, to be able to see that star cluster from the southern hemisphere, you, you, you would have to check in the evening, around 10 o'clock, you will be able to see the Aries lamb rising. When we see that lamb, everything around us turns green. The first rains just came. And so the lamb also, not just does it fix uh, the unevenness, the nights start becoming, when we see that lamb, the nights become shorter and the days become longer. For as long as the lamb is rising throughout uh, the seven months of summer, for as long as that lamb, that lamb is making its way through our sky, we are in the land of promise. There's fruits, there's food, there's, uh, there's, there's plenty in, uh, in, this, uh, in this season. And so to go even further into the word now, a reese, and then we just, we keep it at, at that R, we keep it at that R. To take it into the Hebrew again, to use uh, an, an example, when they start their year, they, they have a, a, a festival or a holy day yeah, called uh, Rosh Hoshanah. Rosh in Hebrew means uh, the head. It is the start. And so that marks the start of their spiritual year. And to take it further, now, Rosh is the head. And then from that, um, from, the, from that word, if you take it to Isizulu now, R and L is actually interchangeable. And so to, be, to use it in Isis, Isindu now, the L, L, which means Lord, to take it to Isindu, it will be, to use Rosh, it would be the Lo in Zulu. So L-O or, or Ulu or Ulo. And so the titles such, such in the scene to our African languages, especially in the South, th titles such as uh, they are addressing, it's been used to address 
a status of an, an elevated status or leaders. For example, if you take it to uh, the Vedic uh, languages, they have the word the rishis, which means master. You are what? You are elevated. You are above the com you are above the, the common man. Unkulunkulu. Pe Zulu. You know the Pe Zulu meaning. And of course, that is the Rosh or the head, the head. Or further in the same two, you see Zulu, the month of Mandulo, Mandulo. And then if you take it up into the into the continent, you will find the word uh, the Orisha or the Ori, the gods. So that is how uh, we tie up uh, the meaning of uh, the word Aries or the Ori to the what? To the head. What else can I add there? The head of course being the temple and then the body being the 12, uh, the 12 tribes um, of Israel. So that is the heaven and then we have the 12 tribes of, of Israel. To take it to the, to the, his, to the Christian context now, we, we bring everyone, we don't leave anyone out in the dark. To bring it to the Christian context now, if you are using uh, the, the Roman Catholic system of their holidays, in, uh, on the 25th of March, they, they host um, the, the Day of Conception or, or Lady Day or the day uh, the angel Gabriel, which is the messenger of the gods, which is actually uh, the planet Mercury. You see what the ancients did, what the ancients did um, uh, to, ke to keep uh, the knowledge of uh, the aspects or the angles of the spheres. They hid it in uh, mythology. And so the angles became angels. And then they were imbued with, uh, with characters to express those, uh, those certain angles. And so now, March marks the, the, the day of announce, announcement. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says, in nine months, or nom kubulwane, in nine months you will be with child. And now if you flip that into the southern hemisphere, we just passed, uh, we were in August. We just came from August. In August where we host Umkosi Wohlanga. August where we host our women's month. August when our mothers marched to where the uni to, to the Union buildings to uh, to Th that is what uh, August means means for us and so now if you flip that over August 25 marks the what our feast of Annunciation when Mercury comes to Nomkubulwane or Virgo and says in nine months you are going to have a child so now from that August to nine months it takes you to June 25 when the sun is what when the sun is born when the drama plays out again so now these angles became angels and they also became easy to these are ideas angles angels that is why they will, they will say to you, it's it's it tunwa it is coming if it's coming it has it's rep it's a representation of an angle um, how you interpret how you interpret the data or how it comes through the, the how it comes through that lineage of uh, of its representatives to you how we interpret that yeah it's open for discussion but these are angles these are angles of um, the orbs of how, the, the energies of the orbs and how they are they are actually influencing us and so yes to go even further into the, the, the Christian context now, we've just entered the land of plenty, the land of promise, the land flowing with milk and honey. This idea of milk and honey, where does it actually come from? I'm gonna go back to uh, cosmobiology again. In cosmobiology, there's this teaching that um, <clears throat> in heaven, in the head, between uh, the cherubim or the cerebrum, there is, um, uh, there's three bodies. You have the optic thalamus, or the father, and then you have uh, the pituitary body, and then you have um, the pineal gland. And then uh, also representing in Egypt, um, the shafts, the three shafts from uh, the pyramid of Egypt, 
that is how uh, it is that is how it's represented the father the son and the mother the pituitary organ is the mother or it's Mary the optic thalamus is uh, is the father or so they also call it um, the uh, the light the light of the chamber or the land of of, of constant day of the, the land of never ending day but that is where that is the father where there is the, where there is no change it is just ukukhanya izwe elingashazwa as it saws as abupa that represents the optic thalamus and so now when the bible says canaan the land of return it says canaan the land flowing with milk and honey in the teachings of uh, the cerebral spinal fluid uh, which they uh, they mytholo mythologized as the seed or the, 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 the birth, death and resurrection of the seed that happens in the human body. They teach that uh, when, um, when, this, when, this, when the seed or when, these, when um, this um, <clears throat> new mental energy when it comes into uh, the temple, you know uh, that picture they paint in scripture when each and every month or each and every year, the smoke would ascend into what? Into uh, the temple. Then they would know that the spirit of God is sitting between the what? <clears throat> the two cerebrums or the, or the cherubims. So now that is where you will find the optic thalamus. And so now the optic thalamus connects um, the pineal gland with the pituitary gland. So when now this fluid or this uh, or this manna that would come from the heavens, when it enters. This, uh, this section of the brain they call uh, the cloister of, or the cla or the classroom classroom or from where, from also from where we get uh, the legend or the the, the, the allegory of uh, center class center class who comes in the into the house through the chimney the chimney of course being the what Ushanga lezizwe or the jet pillar or the or the river Jordan he comes through there, the chimney, and he comes down into the what? The class tour, the class tour, Santa class. That's where we get uh, the allegory as well. So it teaches that when this fluid gets to this place, it is different between the pineal and the pituitary. It is differentiated. The pineal representing the masculine or Joseph, and uh, the pituitary representing the feminine, which is uh, Mary. Or unam, unam they teach that this fluid or the seed or the fluid which will become which will be born in the solar plexus in the house of Virgo unam when it gets here it is dif it is differentiated and changes color these are things that can be observed by the way if you if if, if you're to be opened up it's some we are teaching it because the, it's observable they know about this so they teach that when this fluid gets to these uh, organs, it is dif differentiated. In the pineal gland, it uh, it is given a uh, <clears throat> a a, um, a a a honey or a yellowish substance to it, and then in the pituitary organ, it is given a uh, a milkish substance or color to it. And so this is how now Joseph and Mary. To the immaculate conception joseph provides the honey or the or the gold of, of offer and uh, mary provides the milk the land flowing with milk and honey and then as this fluid comes down it does what it joins and the seed will become born in the solar plexus or in uh, or in the house of uh, in the house of virgo so that is the land flow with milk and honey the land where the fluids are what uh, uh, oh, what's the word? Yeah, the land where the fluid are, are changed. Yes, so that is where I actually wanted to go with that. So up there, you've got those uh, those three those three pillars, and of course, again, these will be the three pillars of masonry and all the other all the other axioms. Or the winter, the summer, sorry, the spring equinox, summer solstice, and the fall, and the fall equinox. Those would be. Those, uh, those three pillars and uh, what else can I add here 
I actually thought this would, uh, would take longer. Oh yes, to go back to the optic thalamus again now. There's this uh, misconception that um, the pineal gland is, uh, is, is actually your third eye. Your pineal gland is not the third eye. The third eye is actually the optic thalamus. And then there's a, a nerve which connects, which connects the optic thalamus. The optic nerve connects these three uh, organs together. And so what happens is for your pineal to be open, when the seed returns now after it's resurrected, after, after sleeping in Joseph's tomb, Joseph being, of course, the what the pineal. When the seed returns, it starts at Joseph's tomb and spends two and a half days. As above, so below, as within, so as within, so without. After the resurrection, it goes to the Father. Remember when Jesus resurrects, he starts, he says, Mary, don't touch me. I need to go to the Father. The Father is where the optic thalamus or the light of the chamber is where Elingashazwa, the, the land of constant day or the land of perpetual rest. To take it to science now, there would be a potential energy at what? At rest, or the fulcrum of all energy and matter. That state of stillness, potentiality, undefined, unconditioned, unordered. There would be there. It starts there, and then when he, when he comes back from the Father, this is where now the seed goes to the to the to the father in the, the optic thalamus, and then the light from the chamber it shines from there to the pineal, opening your petals. Your um, how many are they? I think it's I think it's represented. Yes, opening the petals. There are the hundred and forty four thousand petal. How do they get to that number in the chakra system? Okay, to take to use. Uh, the verdict systems for example in the chakra system the seven chakras each of those chakras has uh, has a the petals has a number so what happens is when you add these petals when you get to the pineal the pineal has uh, it, it adds up to a hundred and forty four starting I think the bottom one the, the, the red chakra I think it starts with six and then it builds up I can't remember the exact numbers when it gets here you add them up you sit at hundred and forty four so in the text, in the text, we are told that um, when G when Jesus resurrects, <clears throat> the graves of the dead they what, the the graves of the dead we open. Now in cosmobiology, the graves of the dead represents your dead selves. Because when the inner seed resurrects, your body goes through a uh, a rejuvenation. You know when the Bible says anyone in Christ is a uh, is a newborn. That's where that's actually coming from because if you are anyone in Christ, if you are living by those principles, monthly your body will go through a, a rebirth. When that seed is resurrected, it is uh, it it is uh, it is empowered a thousand times fold, and so now that is how that one forty four, the totals of the total of those petals one forty four it becomes a hundred and forty four thousand. To go into um, to go into um, the, the teachings about uh, Solomon and then also link them to uh, to, to to Islam. Remember the, the story that uh, Solomon had uh, had seventy two demons or demons or, or, or geishas that uh, he was uh, he was in control of. So what this basically means is when um, when the seed resurrects, go to the thalamus. When it's coming down, the light through the which which creates a, a different vibration at the pineal. When the pineal gland becomes activated, it gets a, a halo. You know, like uh, the, the, the planet Saturn? It gets a halo. And then that halo is actually the ring of Solomon. So those 72 geishas or those 72 archetypes, they are where? It is in your pineal, it's in the pineal gland or your seat of, uh, of, of consciousness. Or your seat, yeah, your seat of consciousness. In the uh, in the, in the Islam traditions now, uh, the seventy-two it is told as um, the seventy-two virgins or the seventy-five virgins that await uh, those who uh, those who die in a particular way. I just yeah, I can't remember the rest of the story, but that is actually where it's uh, it's coming from. So yes, that is the heaven. 
that is uh, the high place. That is why um, <clears throat> when Je before Jesus starts his ministry, when, when his story starts, his parents take him to take him to where they take him to uh, to Jerusalem to do what to go for a uh, for a census, but they find him where preaching in the temple because the temple is what this that's the start of the story, and then from the temple or from uh, or from entering Canaan, we the sun goes to um, from the spring equinox we go to the summer solstice. The summer solstice is uh, is Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city, the, the the land of constant day, the land without night. Yes, that is that. Uh, that is that representation, and that is where we would also put uh, the optic fathomness as well. We will place it. We will place it there. We will place it there. So Jerusalem, that is uh, your summer solstice, and then from Jerusalem, Christ will, will ride riding into Jerusalem uh, into 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 with two donkeys. That is actually a, uh, an, astro an astrological uh, phenomenon that is actually being, uh, being told there. Again, we're looking at northern astrology. So when we have our, our summer solstice in the south, we're going to be having their winter solstice, which means their summer solstice is in, uh, it's in June, when our sun is, uh, when our sun is, being, um, is, being, re when our sun is being reborn. So now, June uh, falls under the constellation uh, Cancer. Under the constellation Cancer, there's two stars. They are called, uh, it's uh, As Aselius Borealis and Aselius something else. Or oh, the two asses that he rides into where? Into Jerusalem. Jerusalem being the sun in its highest position. Those are those, uh, those two, the two asses or the ass and the cult. That's how uh, they actually tell it in the, <clears throat> in the New, in the, in the new uh, Testament. And he rides though that two asses going into where? Going into Cancer or riding into Jerusalem or the highest of fives. And again, when the sun is in that position, that is when Jesus says, when the Bible says, every eye shall see him. That's what happens each and every year. Summer solstice, that's the highest position of the sun. Every eye sees him. <laughs> every eye feels him. Every eye feels him. Um, what else can I add here? Oh yes, yeah. So uh, we just came from August. We just came from August, which is uh, we classify as Women's Month, of which it's technically the same for the North, or it's more correct for the North because August for them is harvest. Of which in August we we have umkosi washanga or with a ritual or the fertility ritual to plead with Nomkumulani so that we may have a bountiful, bountiful harvest throughout the land of, uh, of Canaan. We host that in, uh, in August. So now in the north in March, March 25, the Catholic Church, <laughs> the, Catholic, the Catholic Church, they've always taught how to follow the sun. March 25, three days. <laughs> Three days after the sun crosses over from the what, from the winter into the into the summer. Three days uh, later, they host this the the day of uh, conception, or the holiday of a day of conception, or the holy day for 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 celebrating the day when uh, Gabriel comes to who, comes to Mary. Of course, who's Ga who's Gabriel? Gabriel is the messenger of the gods. The messenger of the gods is. <clears throat> is the planet Mercury? Is the planet Mercury? Our ancients um, <clears throat> they hid this knowledge in uh, in mythology, and so in this example, <clears throat> in this example, what is happening? Uh, or, or the angles? Or the angles? Yes, the angles of, uh, of of the spheres of the planets, and so in order to, to preserve that knowledge and, and keep on teaching it. The angles became the angels. Angle and angle and angel is actually the same word. If you wanna take it to Isindu, it becomes Isitunwa. Isitunwa. How now you interpret these angles or these these light waves that uh, <clears throat> that uh, interact with your uh, with your senses at every level, the vibrations that. Um, that inform your body, 
we are here now we are in this season this is how you behave we are in the summers now it's warmer dilate your your pores so that the body can what so that the body can be able to to breathe cool down and these light waves from these fears all that energy they contextualize it contextualized it in mythology and so what it's basically saying is that now march 25 the sun is crossing over into uh into spring and so the angel or mercury comes to virgo or non kubulan and says in nine months you are going to have you're going to be born you're going to be you're going to have a child and his name will be god with us and then from march 25 it takes you to december 25 so technically in the south now <clears throat> if you flip this it's august 25 <laughs> man it it cannot be simple it cannot be more simpler than that march 25 around the time we host umko siwoshanga mercury comes to the virgin and says nine months you will be with child which places us at uh, at june 25 three days after our winter solstice when our son is born or when our son is reborn and that is where again that is the land down there we align that uh, with uh, scorpio and capricorn energy oh yeah that's where we actually um put it so uh yes that is where we place it in where in august it's it's beautiful guys you know when you're, you're actually seeing this for what it is the alignments become very beautiful the alignments in language the alignments in, in mythology and how we actually doing things it becomes beautiful there's this uh, axiom in zulu where we say izanda zia gezan so while we are we are begging the virgin uh, in the south for a bountiful uh, seasons before we cross over into the into, into spring and summer in the south they are thanking the virgin for the harvest they've just had their harvest moon they are, they just had their their last harvest before the what the sun has been judged now the nights start slowly but surely the nights are going to start getting longer <clears throat> that is why the 31st of October they have the Eve of Hallows they, or the, the day they celebrate or they, the day they acknowledge that the forces of darkness are what they are winning again they are taking over the nights start becoming longer how do you how do they get to now the the October 31st it's the 40-day count again it's the 40-day count from uh, from the from the equinox from uh, the equinox uh, September 21 to uh <clears throat> the 31st of october that's the 30 day count in the christian allegories now that 40 day this is that uh, the time jesus spends um spends with uh, with, with this with the, this oh yes for us in the south after jesus is resurrected that's the time he spends with the disciples for, for, for 40 days teaching them where they get the gospel of the upper room <clears throat> and then he does what and then he ascends and then he ascends because that is the sun once the sun is crossed over once the sun has been resurrected in june 25th and it crosses over from um into spring from there he's going up he's going back up to the father he's going back up to the father in um in that context why was i telling you that um oh yes because of uh, the eve of hallows so in, in our version he is rising to the father in the north it's the eve of hallows the forces of evil are doing what they are coming out again if we watch if you if it was a, 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 a it is a script when we watch him when we're watching a movie this is when the the nemesis goes <laughs> and things just things just go weird and it becomes it becomes yeah we are approaching that aspect if you're in the north this is why they put the day of atonement there because the son has been judged he's been found guilty of which he will die a, uh, a uh, he will die a horrible death on the december 21st on their side the coldest and the darkest point uh, in winter of which for us is what it's the hottest it's the dog days so uh yeah that aspect is under the gazan it becomes beautiful it becomes beautiful when you can uh, when you can see it for what it is and i would love to get more adults at, uh, at this level because 
it doesn't just stop here. It doesn't stop here. It also goes into how we uh, we formulated our ideas on how we understand uh, natural natural phenomena, physical phenomena, which uh, laid the foundation, the hu humanities foundations for what? For inventing and producing solutions for humanity as a, as a whole. So that's the 30 minute mark. I don't like making my videos longer than uh, 30 minutes. So yeah, that's what I have for you guys. And uh, yeah, I am going to teach you how to follow the sun. <laughs>